Hello there everybody, this is Graham, also known as the Collector 75, and welcome back to another Transformers review. <coughs> As you can tell by my front, I'm a little bit ill at the moment, but I thought still I'd do a review anyway. Uh, before I come on to the review, I just want to show a couple of things that I bought recently, because um, they're quite cool actually. Um, this one is the DIA um, City Commander set. Uh, this is actually a knockoff version, it only cost me 40 quid, whereas I think the original cost you something like near 100. Um, of course, yeah, obviously this is a knockoff of the fans project version, uh, but still the quality on this is, um, well I haven't seen any difference, it's actually better than the knockoff Shadow Commander, that, that the set that I've got, so I'm going to review that soon enough. Um, the other couple of bits I got was a couple of the Universe Jets, um, someone told me on, on my last video where I'd done the collection of all the other Universe Jets that they've just released Stun Sunstorm. Uh, so we ordered that one, and I'll show that one in a second, but I just want to show this one first. This is just another little knockoff sort of jet that I've got. Um, I actually made it into a G2 jet. Put a little G2 sign on it just there, and um, if I show you just behind his wings. Put the little G2 ones on there, because the colours on this are pretty like neon colours. And I thought it would suit um, G2 down to the ground, to be honest. Uh, the quality on this is absolutely fantastic. Um, apart from the hands have been put around the wrong way, but you just need a... Uh, hammer to get those pins out and just sort them back around, uh, which I haven't got, so they'll just stay that way for the moment. And the knee joints were put the wrong way around, but that was just a screwdriver job, so no problems there. Other than that, absolutely fantastic, that. Uh, yeah, and of course, now I've got a Sunstorm, which is the knockoff Henke sort of versions. Um, and if you remember the problems I had with my knockoff Henke Skywarp and Thundercracker, this just doesn't have any. The quality on this is actually really very good. Um, <coughs> yeah, it's actually really good. I was surprised just how good this was. And the other one that I bought, which is, I'll take some pictures of these and put them at the end as well, was uh, the one they just got in at that time, which was the knockoff Henke, not that I actually think they did a Henke version of it, uh, Clone Warrior. This is like the other one that you'd have seen just sort of like hanging around in the background and everything like that. Um, very very good the quality on this is actually really good the only one minor complaint I've got is um, just on the back of the nose cone there as you can see it just sort of like has a tendency to move about uh, which shouldn't happen but very minor quibble that one absolutely brilliant I love the face sculpt I love how it's slightly different almost like he's got no mouth in a way to make him look like he's a proper clone or something like that um, very good like I said I'll take some pictures at the end put them in um, at the end so you can see them in both plane mode and robot mode uh, right, for this review, I've just left off some of his weapons, so give me one second to put those on him. Yeah, for this review, I'm going to be doing Armada, not Armada, it's um, Cybertron Unicron. Now then, when uh, when this one would come out, I actually wondered why the hell they bothered with this, because it's a deluxe figure, and instead of being a planet, he's actually some sort of tank, um, with hints back to his... Planet mode, of course, because you've got the front little claws here, and we've got these little spikes hanging off the side of him. Um, it's kind of like Hall of the Ring that went round him. Um, yeah, and he's got quite a lot of detail on him. I don't know if he's going to pick that out too well. Um, he's got, yeah, he's got lots of detail on him. Everything. Shame it wasn't picked out with paint apps or nothing. Um, yeah, you know, it's not bad for what it is, but I just don't see the point of it. He's, he's, he does come with a, a Decepticon planet key. So obviously he's allied to the Decepticons in this series. Um, yeah, again, I just don't see the point really, but it's still not a bad little figure really. Um, he's got these giant little wheels at the back here, they rotate nice and easy. And then he's supposed to have little tracks, I don't know if you're going to see them just here, which tiny little wheel, just so he can run on. Uh, yeah, he's got a nice little cockpit just there with nice translucent windows. And of course, you know, he's got this little bit here, which represents like the front of his planet mode, which used to eat things. Um, that is revealed by putting in the planet key just at the back here in that little slot. I'm going to do it so you can see it actually, It'll probably be better. And then we push it all the way forward, and then it opens up, and then you can see like a little translucent Gatling gun in there. Um, bit of an anticlimax, that one, if I'm honest with you. It does come with one of these little, sort of like little rotational little guns just here. I don't know if it's going to. Pick it out too well because it's very tiny, almost like the one um, is it Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon or Banzai Tron has, but this is actually quite um, stiff plastic, not the 
bulky and flimsy rubber shit that that one comes with. So it doesn't bend down over time. Um, it also comes with his main sort of cannon. Um, it does have articulation. It does go up and, well, down. And then it also, if I hold it up that way, it does uh, rotate from side to side. It does sort of... But it hits every everything else, and so you only get that much movement in it. So it's a bit pointless, really, um, if you want my opinion. Uh, but still not a bad little figure. I suppose it, it looks good. I'll give it that. It does look good. Uh... Right, we're going to transform this. The transformation is easy-ish with slight bits of complication in it. found it easy to take these bits off first, because otherwise they always end up falling everywhere. So we're going to put them down there. Um, then we get these panels. We just disconnect them from there. Do the same on the other side. Just disconnect that panel and leave it like that. Then, I believe, we take... The legs, which are going to be these sections here, as you can see, it's just got a little tab just there. I don't think you can see it hiding behind that gun. Just take that out, and then we just manoeuvre his leg sort of out and about. Do the same on this side, like that. And then we come back here, and then, I believe, we rotate it slightly. That's it, about 90 degrees, roughly. So you get him into that position, and that opens him out a little bit more. Um, <coughs> right. At this stage, we concentrate on the legs. We just sort of straighten them out and then rotate them about, I don't know, what's that, 90 degrees roughly. So straighten them out and then just rotate them because they're on they're on a ball joint at the hip, but they're also on a swivel joint just below that. It's a bit bit tricky. Um, and then we just open out the feet. Let me do it so you can see. It's a bit hard with bloody giant panels in the way. There we go. Just open out the feet and then this little tab reveals his little heel spur so we can stand up. Like the feet, because they always remind me of like a Beast Wars Transformers feet, to be honest. Um, and then we just close these sort of panels up, however you want, against these legs. Take the bad look off them. Uh, right, so we get to there, and then we disconnect the arms from the top panel. Let me find the best way of showing that it's there. So then we, no, you want to do that. They're just sort of pegged in, just in there. There we go. So we take them out, and then. They're on rotational joints at the shoulders, just there. Open those out. Then we, what do we do next? Where do they tab in? Oh yes. We get this whole section and we just flip it that way. Bend the arms down like that. And then rotate them up. And then they're on a, it's hard for me to see. There we go, they're on a, see there's a tab just there and it's going to peg into this slot just there. So when we push it up, it sort of like just clips in. Do the same on this side. Make sure my hands out of the way so you can see it. And this one don't peg in so well. Anyway, then we just rotate the arms around like that. Yep. And then we rotate the arms around just like that. Bring these forearms down and then just open out these sort of like section with the little claw thing on. Open that out and then just flip out his little hand, which is just hiding in there. Then close it up and then just push that up against the back of his arm and then just rotate around the right way. Uh, again just open that out, flip his little hand out, flip that back against there and just rotate it around the right way. Uh, and then we want to get the whole torso section now. Oh yeah we also need to rotate this 180 just like that. That's it. And we're going to get all this and then it just sort of like accordions into place just in there and it's sort of like a tiny little tab just in there that it just connects onto. Then this front bit flips away and then this flips all the way into that and tucks into place. And that is just about Unicron in robot mode. All we need to do is just re re reveal this sort of like radar dish panel which I forgot to mention in, in his uh, vehicle mode. We just flip that down and rotate it around. And that is Unicron in robot mode. Um, it's quite a good little robot mode. My, the ball joints on his hips are a bit loose, so he has trouble standing, but usually when you get him in a pose, he'll stand there. It's got a quite a little good head sort of sculpt. Almost probably suiting to bludgeon out of the Revenge of the Fallen figure, to be honest, rather than that crap head sculpt he actually got. Um, but yeah, you know, the head rotates left and right and everything. It's got some good bit of light piping. It's hard to get it just right, but it's still quite effective. Um, you can hold the weapons. Uh, the, the one with the no back piece has to go under it and become some sort of like scythe, melee weapon, whatever you... We'll get that one later. 
yeah, it does become some sort of like scythe or melee weapon, whatever you want to call it. And then the other one goes in there, like that, and it becomes, I don't know, some sort of claw weapon. I don't know. Looks alright though, but I prefer just leaving them on the side here, just like this. That one was nearly going to fall off then. You know, I just prefer sort of like leaving them on the side, just like, because it's sort of like a more sharper edge. Um, yeah, again, you can put the planet key just into the back there to reveal the Gatling guns in the front there. And again, still not very impressive, I'm afraid. Um, but I do love the detail on this figure. I think he does look quite good, actually. Apart from the bloody kibble he's got on the back, his giant bloody wheels hanging off him. And some thrusters, I think, I suppose, I suppose, I suppose, I mean. <coughs> um, yeah, it, it's alright. It kind of reminds me of, um, is it Beast Machine's tank or in a way, with a giant gun hanging off his arm like that? Oh, not his arm, his shoulder even. Um, I'm trying to get it around to show. But I love the detail, I love the legs, I think they look great. Um, yeah, it's not a bad little figure, really. Uh, right, I'm going to wrap this one up there. I'm going to put some pictures at the end, and including those figures that I showed you at the start. And I'll see you all next time. Bye for now. <laughs>